Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Nico Marillo, and I'm the chair of Texans for Safe Access. I want to give a few minutes for everyone to join, but thank you again for joining us on this beautiful Saturday morning. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. A lot of y'all can just rewind and go back to the beginning and watch this. But again, my name is Nico Marillo, and I'm the chair of Texans for Safe Access. I want to thank you for taking time out of your Saturday morning to join us. And I'm going to get straight to it. So I'm going to share my screen and take you to our presentation. Just bear with me one minute while I get this going. Okay, perfect. We are up and going. So I want to introduce our chapter and our mission. I know we've been over this a lot of times, but we are a growing community. So I want to go over this for any newbies that are joining us. So we are Texans for Safe Access, and we share the mission of our national organization, Americans for Safe Access, or ASA, which is to ensure safe and legal access to cannabis or marijuana for therapeutic use and research. So ensuring safe and legal access to cannabis means, um, let, me, let me take this off of my screen for one second. I want to take the banners off. I'm sorry about that, because sometimes these just get in the way of our presentation. So let me go back, still learning the system a little bit, and I'll just pick right back up where we left off. Okay, almost there. Okay, sorry about that. So ensuring safe and legal access to cannabis means that international, federal, and state laws and regulations recognize cannabis as legal medicine, that medical professionals can recommend medical cannabis, that patients and caretakers have the information they need to make educated choices about medical cannabis therapies, that patients and medical professionals can incorporate a diverse group of products and delivery methods to create the required personalized treatment regimen, that patients can trust labels on products that the medicines are free of pesticides and contaminants, and that medical cannabis treatments are covered by insurance. So currently we have a medical cannabis program. It is a low THC pro, uh, bill. And so it's low THC, no more than 0.5% THC, um, high CBD, not less than 10% CBD oil preparations. So the covered conditions currently are epilepsy, seizure disorders, multiple sclerosis, spasticity, ALS, autism, terminal cancer, and incurable neurodegenerative disease. The current forms of medication that are allowed are oral medications. The most common are um, cannabis oil blends. And what's not allowed right now are smokable forms, concentrated forms, topicals, and edibles that are marketed towards children. We do not have a home cultivation program, and there are three licensed facilities, which two are currently operating. So um, if you qualify, there's, there's a list on the DPS's website, but it's not up to date with um, actively participating physicians. So it can be really frustrating for, pay, uh, for caretakers and parents to call up offices to be put on hold or not to be called back. So it's we just found that it's easier if the patient's or the caretakers contact the providers directly. Now, the two that we have um, contact with are Compassionate Cultivation and Satera. And so you can see the contact information here. Um, your contact at Compassionate Cultivation is Rhiannon. And sh right now they're only doing delivery during COVID. You would go to their website, fill out their form, or you can call them directly. Um, and they'll help you find a doctor in your area. You'll set that appointment and meet with your physician. The medication, again, will be delivered, and then there will be a follow-up in 90 days with your physician. Um, and so, Tara, we don't have a lot of experience with, but um, I'm assuming that the, the uh, process would be very similar to what it is at, culti at Compassionate Cultivation. So, um, anyways, give either of those a call if you qualify. 
And so we think that the teacup's incomplete. We want to finish it. And so uh, this list that you see are conditions that are not covered underneath our teacup and are covered in other medical states. So, you know, chronic pain, severe nausea, terminal illness, glaucoma, inflammation, which is the number one condition most of us suffer with, um, wasting syndrome, cancer, neuropathic pain disorders, HIV, AIDS, anxiety and mood disorders, Crohn's, insomnia, sleeping disorders, PTSD, and gastrointestinal issues. We would love to see all those included as part of our program. So we really want to see an all-inclusive medical cannabis program. So that means no qualifying conditions, higher THC, an advanced cannabis portfolio, home grow for patients up to six plants, and that it is indeed covered by insurance. And so next I want to go over our um, chapter financials. And so currently we have $1,583.97 in our checking account. And that is with an in of $783.25 and an out of $433.90. The majority of the out are some um, expenses that I'll go over next and some collateral to set up our new membership tabs. So here you'll see our chapter expenses. Um, this program we're using now, StreamYard, cost us 15 bucks a month. Um, we love this uh, this option for our chapter. We also use Uber Conference, MailChimp, which is our listserv to send out our, our monthly newsletters, Grammarly to help keep my grammar in check, and um, website management, which cost us $250 a month, and that's to update all of our website and to make sure that it's running properly. And then our website domain and that SSL license cost us around $300 a year. So on a monthly average, we're spending about $325. Your yearly expenses were at um, $2,402. So um, anyways, that brings us to why it's important for um, everyone to try and donate. We are a small nonprofit and we're growing and all of your donation dollars help us operate our chapter and it helps us spread the message of safe access to medical cannabis. So um, I would just encourage you, if you can, to donate a small amount to our chapter. And there's several ways to donate right now. Um, there's five ways to donate. So you can go to our website and you can donate any amount as a one-time payment or a reoccurring payment. Um, I like to think of as like a cup of coffee cost about seven, eight bucks now. And if you can afford one cup of coffee a month, you know, then consider um, that cup to be donated in our chapter. And if you want to sit on a phone call with me over a cup of coffee in your home, um, I'd be happy to do that. Just PM us. And um, that would be a great way for me to get to know my community and for you to get the value of your donation. So um, the second way you can donate is membership levels. We have um, started membership uh, levels for patient supporters, patient advocates, and patient warriors. Those are the three levels. And those are really for people that want to take their advocacy a step further with us and really support our chapter, um, you know, more, more consistently. So as you can see here, each tier is going to have uh, some swag attached to it. That's really exciting for us to be able to offer that to, uh, uh, to you all. So, you know, the patient supporter is um, has very limited swag. It's a TSA sticker and a membership card and some special invites. Uh, patient advocate, you'll get some T-shirts and stickers and buttons and some chapsticks. And then for the patient warrior, you'll get two of each. So um, if you can consider donating to one of those membership levels. Also, a third way to donate is Amazon Smile. If you go online and find Texans for Safe Access, you have to go to Amazon Smile and then find us and do your normal shopping. Those small amounts will come back to our chapter and every little tiny bit helps for us. Uh, another way is you can start a fundraiser on your Facebook page and birthdays are a great way to um, get us help. So we, we do have some allies out there that are doing that for us and we thank them for that. And then lastly, um, the, the fifth way you can donate your time is to volunteer your time. We always need volunteers. And as a growing um, nonprofit, we definitely need volunteers in our chapter and we, and we welcome them. So, um, so those are the five ways that you can donate. And so um, next, I just wanted to go over our upcoming dates and events. So, you know, due to COVID, we are holding all meetings online until further notice. Our uh, facility, the Meadows Conference Center, has also canceled all of the appointments 
for the year. So I would assume that um, we will be doing this in the home and our annual events, again, postponed until further notice. So upcoming chapter meeting dates, August 1st um, will be in Spanish. So I, it will not be me. We, I will introduce our speaker, Pilar Angel. And, um, and so anyone that you know that is Spanish speaking, tell them to tune in and, and join the conversation. And then you can see September 12th, October 3rd, November 7th, December 5th. Those are the rest of our upcoming um, chapter meeting dates. And those will be here live on Facebook with me. Okay. And so as, as you all know, um, volunteer work is the core of any chapter. And all of our board members are unpaid volunteers. So we really appreciate the people that really do put their time into uh our chapter to help us get the message out to patients. So one of those uh, volunteers on our board is Pilar Angel. And I want to read Pilar's bio. Pilar has been with us for about a year and a half now, and we're real lucky to have her. So Pilar is an experienced social communicator, journalist, and writer with more than 25 years of experience as a top level communications and branding consultant. Before moving to the U.S., she worked extensively in her native Columbia with clients such as former president and first lady, a Nobel Prize winner, and several other high-level government officials. Pilar co-founded Exos Performance Institute in 2009, focusing on resiliency and peak performance training for C-level executives. In 2017, she received her second patent, securing the intellectual property of a unique combination of techniques used to assess stress markers in the body and boost cognitive performance. An advocate of lifestyle medicine for many years, she brings a multifaceted skill set to the cannabis industry. For the past year, she has consulted in the preparation of multiple dispensary applications in California and more recently acted as the public relations director for a pre licensed dispensary in Maryland. A firm believer in the therapeutic power of whole plant, of whole cannabis plant, Pilar believes that the new consumer is an educated patient. Sharing patients' testimonies and communicating with the miraculous results many have experienced is key to end the stigma with which prohibition tainted cannabis. In her free time, Pilar volunteers for the Institute Nishotros, a Hispanic outreach and advocacy group that operates in Denton current Director of Communications and Community Outreach for the Texans Board of Safe Access. So Pilar is very, very valued and she will be um, presenting the, I'm sorry about that, she will pre be presenting the um, next board meeting on August the 1st. So, um, so all of our chapter financials and minutes can be found on our website under the About Us tab and we update those bi-monthly. You can find us online. Our website's txsafeaccess.org. Uh, here you can sign up for our newsletter and that we send that out monthly so we don't bog you down with too many um, emails. And, uh, and then you can connect with us on any of the social media platforms below. Facebook, of course, here, Instagram, and be sure to check out our YouTube channel. So let me get back to the screen and I'll sign off with y'all. All right. Well, thank you all again so much for joining us on this beautiful Saturday morning. Join us next month with Pilar and Hell, and our meeting will be in Spanish. Looking forward to seeing you at some point. Be safe out there and have a great weekend.